Okay, so what we got here is the Hyper 9 motor that we're going to use to power the Lotus Europa. And uh, I've already got my crankshaft adapter. Uh, this is going to hold my flywheel and clutch plate. Um, it's basically just a, a cylinder machined down and drilled to my uh, flywheel dimensions. I'm going to be using, uh, believe it or not, it is a Toyota Yaris flywheel. Uh, it is the almost the exact same size as the Europa because um, it's about an 8 inch disc uh, and it fits inside the bell housing. Uh, so that's why I chose that. Uh, and it is also aluminum, so lightweight, right? This is our bell housing right here. Um, I'm just in the process of assembling it. It nicely unbolts from the transmission, which is kind of nice for mock-up. And our uh, release bearing. So what I've done is I've had a plate cut that would go flush with the bell housing here so it looks something like this except I got it upside down this round so it's basically cut out to go against the bell housing now, one of the problems that you'll come across with this and most motors is you can't just uh, bolt this up to the motor because you, a lot of the times you have to space the motor back. And that can kind of get complicated. So another thing that I've done here it's kind of nice because you can buy these. They are NEMA B-Face spacer rings. They come about that thick, pre-drilled with all your holes uh, that fit the four bolt hole locations on this motor, right? And so now I can effectively space the motor back away from my uh, bell housing. And what I've done here is because this is a centered ring, and obviously these come with them cut out, we machined a lip onto this ring so that I can center this ring on the motor. It would just slip around go this way. Now, I can put it on this way. And Tight fit. All right. Line it up with the holes. Now, I did have to space this out quite a bit because of the way this clutch is. So I end up getting two rings, and we've machined one down from our initial thickness. That way I can now space it back even more. So what I'll do here is, got our spacer. I'm gonna put our bolts in, counter some into our main plate.
So there, this plate now puts us about flush. I'll show you the back side. It puts us about flush with the crank. Hard to see, but. So now I can put my clutch on. Now I decided to dowel this because I needed to save uh, save room and I couldn't have a hub that would normally this would be recessed into so that it it can't wobble off center. Um, if you're just relying on the bolts to keep you uh, like clamping force. So we put two dowel pins in this thing to uh, center it. Fasteners. Using the ARP bolt just because of the reliability. Not that I think I'd be having any issues. Going to be running a clutch on this car. Um, obviously, I'll have to align this and then put our pressure plate on, um, and then that would be that would be it for the motor. So, kind of a nice thing. I mean, laser or water jet out a flat plate of your bell housing. Uh, most machine shops can do that. I did this all out of aluminum and then my next part basically to save money and time is to use the spacer rings um, because uh, why make it if uh, someone else has already done it and it turned out nice by uh, locating one ring onto the motor and then uh, the next ring is your spacer. And uh, it's easy to find the exact center of those rings because there's six holes in there. So any machinist or machine shop can quickly find the center. Uh, same with uh, my uh, adapter plate, I'll say. Um, it was a lot easier on this particular vehicle because I could bolt it up to our bell housing and know the exact center via my input shaft so as soon as I've got all my transmission parts we will be able to uh, put it all together I just got the car on over here A little bit of another update. The uh, seats. Both in place. Kind of changed around how some of the electrical is going in the front. Um, 
obviously we're doing up some uh, axle shafts, new uh, wheel bearings and hardware. Yeah. <laughs> 